Hi, this is Karin from the Huntley Library. Thanks for joining me for another Teen Crafternoon. This time we're going to be making button hearts. So let's gather some supplies and we can get started. Okay, before I walk you through uh, all of the supplies that I have here, I'm just going to show you a few examples of these different button heart designs that you can do. These are a couple that I made. Um, this one just has scrapbook paper glued to a, a wooden kind of coaster and then buttons on top of that. And then this one I painted um, black and white stripes and then did my buttons um, all in red on top of that um, using tacky glue. This one was Mod Podge. So there are different things that you can use as your adhesive to keep the buttons attached to whatever canvas you're working with. So those are two of my examples. And then I found a bunch more on Pinterest. So if you're looking for more ideas, um, I definitely recommend checking that out or just doing an image search. So these are some of the other um, ideas I found. I really like the words in the background. So if you have um, some newspaper or magazine or um, an old book that is uh, <laughs> ready to be repurposed for something else. You could use that for getting some words in your background. Um, and then there's some people who just, just with hearts on a plank canvas here. Those are just pink button hearts, um, white hearts there. This is on a card. Um, I would recommend using something pretty stiff to hold the buttons on, otherwise they'll pop off pretty easily. Uh, even with the glue. This is similar to the one that I made with painted stripes, except this is on a canvas, canvas, um, and red hearts, and then they hand lettered some things there. This is another one with words in the background. Looks like calligraphy, and it's in a picture frame, so if you have a picture frame, that might work well too. And then this was a, kind of an anniversary card, so all kinds of options. If you don't have buttons, but you have um, other little doodads that you could glue on there, like uh, sequins, that might work, um, or beads. Uh, all of those could provide the same kind of texture. So the supplies that I have here are, I'm gonna be using Mod Podge to glue my buttons down. I found that this worked really well. We did have some tacky glue, um, but ours is pretty old, so uh, <laughs> it was hard to work with to get it out of the bottle. So if you have fresher tacky glue, that would be fine. It does dry clear. Um, that's what I used in, in this example here, um, so you don't have to worry about it uh, obscuring any background that you have on there. Um, our Mod Podge was much fresher, so I'm going to go with Mod Podge. Um, for the painting design, if you're painting something, have a variety of paint colors that you're going to be using. If you are using something like this wooden coaster as your background, I recommend uh, priming it with a white paint first um, so that your other paints show up really nicely on there. Same thing if you're using like a wooden picture frame like this and you're going to paint the outside of the frame, you might want to paint it white first. Um, or if you're using black, you can paint black around that just so that it's nice and opaque. Um, with this one, you can put whatever kind of picture you want in it. So if you want your buttons to be the focal point of that, you could paint around the frame and then just have the buttons in the middle with your heart. Or uh, you can have buttons decorating the outside of the frame too. So that's up to you if you're using a picture frame. If you don't have either of those things, you could use a canvas, either like a board canvas. This is not a board canvas, this is just cardboard, but you could use a small canvas or a larger one, depending on how big you want your uh, design to be. Um, this is just a very thick cardboard. So if you have cardboard around your house, you could use that too as your background for your design. And then um, obviously lots of buttons. We had quite a collection um, in our craft closet, so that was good. And my aunt, when I was a kid, used to save buttons just for us to play with as kids. So I inherited her collection of buttons um, when she passed away. And they've made lots of cool crafts. Um, lots of sock bunny eyes over the years. So if you have a collection of buttons, use those. You can also buy buttons in bulk from places like um, Michael's or other craft stores. If you don't have a ready supply, or like I said, other doodads will work just fine. Um, scrapbook paper, if you're going to do the scrapbook paper design, um, we have all kinds of different things to choose from here. Uh, 
and lots of craft stores sell the scrapbook paper too. So paintbrushes also are helpful for painting and also for uh, applying your glue or your Mod Podge because you're going to want a thick coating of that. So now that we've got some things assembled here, I'm going to put something down to protect my work surface and then I will show you um, how to get started. All right, I am ready to paint the little canvas that I have here, or my little wooden coaster. And I'm just going to paint it with a coat of this uh, white paint so that my other colors show up a little bit brighter. Just priming my coaster. You can, if you want to, paint both sides if you have something like this. Um, but obviously you'll have to wait for one to dry before you paint the other. And depending on how long or how much paint you put on there, that will affect your drying time. This actually, when I did it before, dried pretty quickly, so maybe five, ten minutes. The uh, wood absorbed um, a lot of the moisture from the paint, so I think that helped with my drying time. So while this dries, I will um, show you how to get started on the design for the scrapbook paper or the paper backing sort of design. Okay, so we're going to do two at once. design I'm going to be using this scrapbook paper here and I'm going to measure it so that it fits on my little coaster. So if you're using scrapbook paper that has different designs throughout, you, might, you will want to pick an area that you like um, to cut out if you have a small canvas like I do. So I like that one. And I'm just going to take a pencil and quickly trace around that. And we're going to want it to be, when we cut it out, slightly smaller than the, than the piece that we're attaching it to, um, just so that we don't have edges sticking over the end of it there. So once you've got that trace, you can cut it out. And you don't have to use just one big piece. If there are pieces that you want to use together and make sort of a collage of different papers or words and papers, you can cut them out in whatever shapes you want. to eventually fit on your canvas or coaster or base material. What shall I call it? Okay. So that's going to go on here. And it's not perfect. And I do have some, this is a little bit longer up here, so I'm going to trim that edge a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now um, we're going to use glue, or in my case, Mod Podge, to attach this to the base layer. So let me get something to protect the table, and then we will do that. Mod Podge is a little stinky, so if the smell bothers you, um, you could use some other kind of glue or adhesive. I'm just going to take some of this that's in the lid right here and apply a nice layer to my coaster. And I am going to be painting on top of it um, when I put the buttons on so I can get the edges really good 
um, when I put the paper down um, at that point. Just make sure you have a nice moist layer here for best results. Adhere. Now with the Mod Podge, I did not um, have a whole lot of wiggle room. It's like it's not moving at all once I stuck it down uh, with glue. It might you might be able to shift it a little bit. So be careful when you're um, putting this down because it might just get stuck in place like it's supposed to. <laughs> And if you don't like the, um, see I have some of the wood kind of peeking through here. If you don't like how that looks, you could uh, also paint over the edges, um, I, like maybe in white or something, or brown to give it sort of a vignette kind of look. Uh, and you could do that after you put the buttons on to see how, it's look, how it looks um, with the whole effect, or you could do it now uh, just to cover those up. I am going to paint, I think, a little bit of white around the edges. So let me clean my brush and I'll come back and do that. I pushed out my Mod Podge for white paint again. And I'm just going to paint around some of those bare edges. And I don't want a whole lot of paint on there. I just want to do like a light coating so that some of this background uh, shows through. And if that looks like it's uh, too thick or too opaque later on, um, or right after I do it right now, <laughs> if it looks a little bit too thick, then I can go over with um, a paper towel or something and just blot some of that off of there. I'm getting a few little bubbles here, so I'm going to press down on those to make sure that they stay flat. And since the top of this is pretty dry, I have just sucked all of the moisture of the paint off with my fingers here by this pressing. Um, I could put something heavy on it just to weight it down and make sure that it dries flat. So I will do that off camera and we'll let this one set up a little while and we can come back and start painting the other one which was drying before. So I'm going to clean my brush and switch pieces. Now's the fun part. You get to decide what kind of background you want to paint for your uh, little canvas here. I'm going to go with sort of a night sky kind of background. So I have um, black, two different blues, and a purple paint um, that I'm going to use, and then maybe some white too if I need to lighten anything up. Um, so I'm just going to, since this is so small, I don't need a whole lot of paint. I'm going to use a little plate for my palette. Oops. This one needs mixing. I just have clear goo <laughs> on this plate. So make sure your paint is mixed up nicely and shake it like that. And that looks a little bit better. If you're doing multiple little heart canvases, then, and you're going to use the same colors, you could put out a little bit more paint, maybe. But you really won't need very much. And you can use a paper plate or a plastic plate if you have those available. Just my lovely palette. And I'll open up the white paint too, just in case I need that. Okay, and then um, if you're going to be changing colors, 
and you don't want them to mix, make sure you have some water available for cleaning your brushes or your brush. Um, you can have different sizes of brushes too. I have a little one here and then a larger one. I'm not going to be doing anything super detailed, so I'm going to use the larger brush because it'll cover the canvas faster. Um, so I'm going to get some water and then we'll start painting. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with a little bit of water on my brush here. It was pretty dry. I don't want it super wet though either, so dry it off just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start with I think this lighter blue and paint some of that on over my white. And some of the darker blue here at the edge. And let it blend with that lighter blue. And some purple over here. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the black and then blend that with the, the purple on this edge. And grab some more of the purple and mix that in so it's not all black. And then I'm going to rinse that off. And dry my brush a little bit. And come back with the uh, this lighter blue again. And then the darker blue again in this corner. More dark blue. I apologize for the gnawing in the background. My rabbits are bunstructing again. This is prime time, busy rabbit time at my house. So that is Hickory in the background, working on one of his projects too. I bet you didn't know that I had artistic rabbits. <laughs> So once it starts looking good, you don't want to overwork it and blend all of the colors together if you want these, some separation here. So I'm just going to stop there and say, okay, that's good. Even though that's hard to do sometimes because you're like, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? Uh, I will just stop and be satisfied with <laughs> what I have on right here, right now. So make sure you clean your brush if you're done painting and clean up your paints so that they don't get permanently fused to your plate if you're using a glass plate like I am. If you're using a plastic or a paper plate that you're going to throw out anyway, you can get rid of those when you're done painting. Okay, and then we can switch back to our other design while we're waiting for our paint to dry. I have pre-selected a bunch of different green buttons to use for my heart on this piece here. If you would prefer to make another shape, you are welcome to do so. I'm doing hearts because it is February and Valentine's Day is approaching. So I'm going to make some Valentine's gifts. So uh, I think I have more buttons here than I'm going to need. And if you want, you can kind of prearrange them here to get an idea of what it could look like. Since there are a lot of buttons, 
it's difficult to make sure they all stay in the places where you put them initially. Um, although you can do this. It will just take a little bit longer probably to lay them all out ahead of time. So what I'm going to do instead of doing this is I'm going to paint a heart shape on here using my Mod Podge and I'm going to start sticking the buttons on as I go. So depending on your method, follow me or do your own thing. <laughs> Here's my Mod Podge. Um, this also gives you an opportunity to uh, delineate where your heart is before you stick things down. And you could draw a heart template on here too if you wanted to so that you have an outline of you know where you want everything to go. So paint and stick, paint and stick, and then we'll come back and put more layers of the Mod Podge over the buttons so that they really stick down. If your buttons have kind of a rounded side and a flatter side, make sure that the flat side is the side that gets stuck to your base piece here, or you're, you may have trouble keeping those buttons on. And uh, feel free to reapply Mod Podge or glue or whatever you're using as you go so that uh, it's nice and sticky for all of the buttons that you're using in your design and it doesn't dry while you're trying to piece them together. I need a smallish button for this little area here. And the Mod Podge does, with the buttons at least, slide around a little bit, or they slide around a little bit as you're gluing them down. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room here if you need to make some adjustments about where things are sitting. Okay, in the bottom and the other side of my heart kind of dried, so I'm just going to reapply some Mod Podge over here so that I can see more of where I want the outline of things to be. Tiny button. I was mistaken about the rabbit that was constructing that was actually raisin. And as soon as I said her name, she started doing it again. Good job, bun. Oops. More glue. It almost looks like a heart. Almost. I will save some of these smaller buttons to stick on the outside if I need them. It might not be a perfect heart. It will be sort of heart shaped. Roughly heart shaped. Okay, 
I need something up in the corner here. I think. Maybe one more there. Oh, that looks good. That's like actually like I planned it or something. <laughs> okay. And maybe one more right over in there. I've got a little one. Do I have a little one I can stick up in here? glue that down really well. The Mod Podge also um, dries clear and there's different varieties. There's like a matte Mod Podge or a shiny Mod Podge and I'm using the shiny variety so when this dries it will be glossy and I think that'll work well with the, the hearts. I showed you that other design that I made and I think the shiny is very pretty and it allows the uh, button's shininess to shine through too. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Okay, so those look like they're pretty well adhered and I have enough buttons over here if I wanted to make another one, so. There's that. Clean your brushes at this point and we're gonna switch back to our paint project. Don't clean your brushes. Um, if you want, you can paint um, with Mod Podge over the rest of your canvas here. I had mentioned doing that before and then I forgot about it. Um, but once these are in place and you, if you want the whole thing to be shiny and have sort of the same look, you can paint with the Mod Podge over the rest of the paper or the background. And then everything will be stuck together and everything will be shiny and it will all look beautiful. Although right now it doesn't look like the final project product since we are going to have to wait for this to dry. Okay, now clean your brushes. <laughs> okay, my paint is dry and I have a selection of white and gold and silver buttons for this one. So I'm going to do what I did before and paint on where I want my heart to be. And maybe if you were doing something, if you want to do a different shape, you could do a crescent moon or a star or just put the buttons on um, just arrange them in different areas like constellations. That would be cool too. So I'm going with my heart theme. And this shows up uh, really nicely on the darker background. So hopefully that will help me place my buttons. What to start with? I'm going to do this kind of quickly, I hope, so that my glue doesn't dry. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. It's quiet again. The rabbits have finished their projects. I have not finished my project. but it does not involve me gnawing on anything. So less disruptive, right? I like that one a lot. That's cool. Mm, that one's kind of round on that side. Okay, something smaller for this space. Oh, things are starting to move around. So it looks like my base coat is drying out a little bit. So I will go over it and use lots of glue to get this stuck down. 
Yep, this one's traveling. Stop traveling. This one in the middle kind of right here is taller than the other buttons too, so I want to make sure that that is pasted down really well so it doesn't hop off. The good thing about having a stiff background to glue these two, the under matter here, um, is that it won't bend because the bending of the material can cause the glue to, the seal of the glue to break and then things can pop off. And that's what happened when I made some other projects with buttons and glue. So hopefully that's, this will solve that problem. So how can you display these once you're finished? You could just leave them flat like this. Um, you probably, even if you're using these uh, little wooden coaster type things, you probably can't use them as coasters because the buttons give it too much relief to actually uh, put a glass or something on there. It's not, <laughs> could have some spilling since it's not completely flat. Oops, that one wants to be part of it. You can, you can join us. But uh, you can prop them up on something. Um, if you have little easels, we use them for books at the library. If you have a, an easel of some kind that's small, you can use that to prop up your canvas. Uh, you can hang it on the wall. I think I'm gonna add some magnets to the backs of mine so that they can be hung on the fridge or some other metal surface. And those are some ideas of how you can display them. Or you can uh, give them away to other people and make the displaying uh, issue their problem. <laughs> We've been rejoined by Industrious Rabbits. Thank you, Industrious Rabbits. Oh, let's do there. All right, I've deviated from the outline a little bit. Let's hope we can bring it back into alignment there. Maybe one more up in this corner. <coughs> Oops. That one. These two actually are eager to jump off. side. Okay, let's see. I need something in here. Maybe a couple of these little ones. This could be an exercise in uh, learning what fits where. Estimating with your eyes different sizes and different shapes. It's a useful skill when you're uh, filling containers or packing boxes to move and packing a truck, packing a car. So work on it now. So you'll be very good at it in the future. What do you think? It's a little bit, a little bit wonky down here. Um, I will try. I think this is just going to move things a little bit too much. Maybe, maybe like that, and then I can stick one more small one in here. What do you think? I, think I like that slightly better than how it was. And now I think I'm done buttoning. So 
so I'll just get the whole canvas and on top of the buttons again and make sure that there's plenty of glue, Mod Podge, everywhere so that we don't have loose buttons. You do want the layer of Mod Podge that you put on the, the flat part of your background to be um, relatively smooth or you are going to see the textured lines from your paintbrush on there. Um, if that doesn't bother you, that doesn't, then don't worry about it. Otherwise, try and smooth it out a little bit. And you can tell as it dries because you're going to start to see the color of the background emerge and there won't be this white film over everything. You can go around the, the edge too of your canvas if you want to. And since I'm only going to be displaying the one side of these and I'm going to put uh, magnets on the back or you know some kind of thing to hang these with, I'm not going to paint the back of mine. And if you are painting the back of yours, um, be careful because whatever you adhere to it may just pull the paint off. So, okay. Looks good. So I'm going to let that dry and then um, when we get all back together again, when everything is dry, I will show you how both of these pieces turned out. Everything is dry now. So here's what we got. Here's our piece with the uh, scrapbook paper background, a little bit of paint and buttons on top. And then this one, it looks like there's a, still a few tacky areas on there, but almost dry. So we have a painted background here and then the buttons on top of that. And then the other two examples that I made earlier. Good job, everybody. Hope you had fun making button hearts with me today. Uh, for more craft ideas and other activities, you can check out our website, www.huntleylibrary.org.